In this video, we'll go deep inside the body of a male betta fish and take a quick look at a couple things that very few people ever get to see. This is the swim bladder, which is also known as the gas bladder, and it's basically a little balloon filled with gas that enables the fish to stay suspended in the water without having to use its fins to keep itself from sinking to the bottom. The swim bladder also helps the fish keep its balance and remain upright in the water. For some fish, the swim bladder has the added role of allowing the fish to send and receive sounds so that they can communicate with each other over long distances. Unfortunately, both bettas and goldfish are known for having swim bladder problems. And in both cases, I believe that the trouble usually stems from improper feeding. And here's what I think happens. People feed their betta dry pellets that float, and it's often the case that they feed too much all at once. Then the fish gobbles up a bunch of that dried food and swallows it. The food then absorbs water and expands in the gut, which causes digestive problems such as bloating and constipation. And then the usual line of thinking is that the bloated digestive system pushes on the swim bladder, which causes it to malfunction. But the betta's digestive tract ends right here, and all of its organs are located up here. But the betta's swim bladder is way back here, so that's a little curious how one is affecting the other. Nonetheless, notice how far back the swim bladder is on the betta's body, while on a guppy, the swim bladder is in a very different spot. Here, you can see how the swim bladder on a guppy is much further forward than it is on a betta fish. And by the way, those black dots inside this female guppy are the eyes of her unborn babies. Nonetheless, the different location of the swim bladder on a betta has to do with the fact that it carries a lot of its weight in the fins at the back half of its body. And to compensate for the big fins, the swim bladder is located further back on the betta than it is on a guppy. And while we're on the subject of fins, the fins of a betta fish are made up of webs of skin supported by flexible bony rays that give the fins their strength while still allowing some flexibility. These fins are made up of living tissue with nerves and a blood supply. In fact, each fin ray contains an artery that brings blood to the fin tip and two veins that bring blood back to the body where it is then sent to the heart. And in order to keep these fins supplied with oxygen and nutrients, there's a lot of blood moving in and out of the fins. Here, you can see the large blood vessels at the base of the tail, as well as the numerous veins that are inside the fins. So now you know that the fins of a fish are not dead like our hair or fingernails, but are in fact living tissue with nerves and a bloodstream. And that brings us to the end of this brief look inside the betta fish. Hopefully, you were able to see some things that you've never seen before and even learned a thing or two along the way. Thanks for watching, and I really hope that you have a beautiful day.